Welcome to my session, and it's great to have you join with me about the metrics, about uh, define metrics for the uh, CI CD uh, optimization. My name is Shu Quanhuan. I'm, I'm with the 99 Cloud and the technical director of 99 Cloud. In this session, I will share with you about how to uh, define metrics for your CI CD optimization. Uh, right now, uh, nowadays, everyone is uh, moving to Agile to stay competitive, and the uh, Agile development has become those uh, very, very trendy buzzwords, as you know, right? And um, as we can see, the Agile manifesto outlines four key values to streamline the software development process. The first one is the uh, individuals and the interaction over process and tools. Second is working software over comprehensive docu docu uh, document. The third is the uh, customer collaboration over the uh, contract negotiation. And fourth is the responding to, the cha to change over following a plan. Based on these uh, four values and developers come up with another 12 principles of the age of software development. And there is a, uh, there is a principle, uh, is so working software is the primary uh, measure of the progress. And because this agile development is very different from the traditional waterfall uh, development, it emphasizes more about the interaction or communication. So we, it's not easy to actually implement uh, agile uh, models and even hard to define metrics to optimize them. But anyway, we need to uh, define the metrics to uh, optimize them because if you cannot measure it and uh, you cannot improve it, which is said uh, by the Peter Drecker. I don't know if you guys have the experience uh, if you want to lose weight. I, I want to keep it and want to lose my weight and it's hard for me to keep, uh, in, uh, lose the weight because if I can't keep an eye on my uh, on, on my weight, and I cannot find the innovation, uh, find, get inspired by by myself, and keep uh, keep uh, keep working on 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 exercise to lose my weight. So I uh, I have an idea. Then I, I buy a, a app, and the app can track the uh, the uh, the uh, the weight of myself every day and, and do exercise and I get the metrics of the exercise and we'll see how the exercise can improve my body and finally I can get a, um, a good shape. So I think it's a similar to uh, improve uh, the CICD by defining metrics. Traditionally, uh, people when adopt the agile development, they, uh, they do not measure it. There are several reasons. First one is uh, when we use the measurement, the, it, you, it, you will use the measurement by mistake because you don't really understand your metrics. The second is some metrics is actually is wrong and, and it's not useful, so you, you cannot actually follow the metrics to optimize your process. And third is some uh, to implement some me measure metrics is cost a lot, so you cannot pay uh, pay um, uh, uh, you cannot uh, spend a lot of resources to uh, to to implement or, or collect those measures to help to improve your process. So um, let's see why we uh, need those metrics. In general, there are uh, there are three um, aspects for for for, uh, for uh, as a reason we need to, uh, to use the metrics. The first one is uh, decisions. We can use the metrics help to make decision for us. For example, we can make the uh, business decision, get better product uh, for the customer, and get the result feedback from the customer by using metrics. And then we can use the metrics to improve. 
we can improve the quality of, uh, of the product and we can improve the uh, velocity of the team. And third is we can use the metrics to do a prediction. If we uh, have a lot of metrics about your CI CD process, you can predict a lot. For example, you can predict the uh, velocity of your, your team in the next iteration cycle. Or you can uh, predict the customer behavior based on a lot of uh, the net metrics. At the same time, we can uh, categorize the agent metrics in several uh, phases uh, in, in, in a development cycle. First of all, uh, the metrics is, can help us in the iteration planning. It can help us to make sure, uh, make clear the uh, priority of the features or the, uh, the size of the features based on your history uh, data. And it can help us to uh, do the iteration tracking I just mentioned. And third, it can help us to uh, motivate and improve the team and the uh, team member. We can visualize the, for example, we can visualize the build status in the uh, dashboard and help the team understand the current status uh, of your your, t uh, your building system and understand the uh, building time of the uh, system and you can find ways to improve it. In the following, uh, in the following uh, uh, slides, I will introduce from my company, uh, an example of my company, how we, from the basic metrics build time to optimize it, uh, several uh, other metrics, and finally we can improve the build time and improve the uh, velocity of uh, the development cycle. And uh, last but not least, we can also identify the process uh, pro uh, problems and, and, and identify the, the quality of the, during the pre-release and the post-release. We can get the data from the pre-release and understand the development quality of the product and uh, get the data from the uh, post-release to understand the feedback of the customer and help us to close the feedback loop. Uh, feedback, uh, loop. We are talking a lot about, uh, about the metrics, so what exactly the uh, metric is. I, I search a lot in the website and I think uh, I find a, a uh, a, a, a proper uh, definition of the metrics uh, of a metric. I think the, uh, this is uh, te uh, this uh, definition is uh, tells a lot. A metric is any collectible, qualifiable uh, measure that can enable one to track the performance of an aspect of a system over time. So I uh, highlight several uh, key words during this sentence. Let's see uh, what's con uh, collectible and qualifiable measure. It, during your process, if you're going to measure something, uh, some, uh, some uh, performance issues may not easy to uh, measure. For example, if you're going to measure the, uh, the mood of your team member, that is very hard to measure, right? Uh, except you can use some uh, the survey or, or some other uh, statistics method to, to collect the, the, the data of, from the team member. So uh, you have to find a way or, or spend a lot of resources to, to collect the metrics you want to get. And the uh, second is track the performance. We can uh, collect a lot of data from the whole development cycle, but not all the data we want. We just want the data we care. For example, we just want to measure some aspect of uh, the performance. So we have to collect that kind of data, not all the data. And one matrix maybe just uh, reflect a aspect of the whole process, which means you have to have different metrics uh, to uh, reflect your, your aspect of the uh, whole process. And there is no one data or, atrix, uh, or metrics can tell you everything. And 
at last is the overtime. You have to have enough data and and collect the data over time so you can see the trend of those data and you will find the problems and you will finally get the solution. So uh, a lot of people ask me if there is a one metrics to talk about the whole process. So I think the answer is no, right? Actually, uh, during the uh, agile development um, uh, process, there are many research. They are uh, they are uh, they are finding um, they are doing a lot of job to help us to understand different aspects of the agile development. I list I list uh, the several aspects, and there there is some metrics in here. I think that this metrics can give you some intuition about your problem. Sometimes, for example, I just mentioned the team happiness is uh, belong to the people and team human elements. As we know, human always be a very important factor uh, in the agile development. And uh, uh, the second is the process health metrics, like the cycle time and the uh, uh, lead time of the story or, or the task. The, fourth, the, the third is about the release metrics, like the release time, uh, cost per release. Fourth is about the uh, product development metrics, like the burn down chart. And today we will focus talk about the uh, build time, which is a uh, technical metrics here. I will share you a, a story from uh, my company, how we optimize the build time of the system. Before that, I will introduce you uh, to approach how you can develop metrics for your own. Actually, when we uh, want to resolve something, some pro a, a problem, there is two approach. The one, one is the top-down approach. The second is the bottom-up approach. I personally uh, recommend when we want to develop a metrics for your own, we can use the top-down approach because we can uh, place the goal setting as your first step and force you to find the uh, metrics related to the problem, which is very critical to uh, develop um, a metrics for a specific problems. And if, if you don't have a, a specific goal, then you can try to use the bottom-up approach. You list all the metrics you can get and just look at the data and try to find some uh, trend or some uh, or some pattern of them, and you may get some intuition about the, the data, then you may can have some uh, idea to how to optimize your, uh, your, your whole process, right? So the uh, next, I will introduce the um, um, CI-CD infrastructure of 99 Cloud. 99 Cloud, uh, we are developed the uh, um, uh, OpenStack distribution based on the OpenStack Cloud, and we leverage the, uh, uh, the Drew as, our, uh, as a CI system inside our uh, as a CI infrastructure. And we uh, accept Drew, we also use the RedMine to help to check the project and issues. We use GitLab for the, for the uh, Git uh, code, and Garrett for review, and Jenkins server for, for the integration server. And we have the local mirror servers. And at last, we uh, we have uh, our own the metric server. The metric server will talk to uh, the red mine for the uh, issues and the uh, project, and talk to the Git. We can get the uh, uh, Git metrics, and talk to the Zoo. We can get the pipeline metrics, and talk to Jenkins. We can get the uh, build information. Right now, we are uh, use the Zoo uh, v2, not upgrade to the Zoo uh, v3 yet. As we all know, the uh, Drew we can define different uh, pipelines, like the uh, check pipeline, uh, gate pipeline when we are going to merge to to the uh, repo, and the post pipeline when we um, uh, it will happen when you uh, get merged and pre-release and release and prior uh, and uh, release pipeline. 
So uh, right now I will show you the data from the uh, build system. We collect uh, uh, the build time uh, from the system, and here is the uh, build time train. It's a very nice curve, right? <laughs> we uh, actually we launch a new project in the uh, August, and the build time it will increase uh, dramatically, and uh, it, co it 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 trouble us a lot, and we. Uh, so the following slides, I will introduce you how we find ways to define metrics to understand the key issues of, of this uh, increase and how we can uh, define metrics to keep monitoring, monitoring this uh, uh, trend. And we finally, we will uh, resolve this issue and we will get a nice drop in the uh, uh, late September even though they have a small increase in the uh, in the in the next month in, in in the month of uh, November, okay. So look at uh, look at this uh, increase. First of all, we will come, there is a, a questions come up to us: uh, Are all the job runs equally in different build servers. At, uh, in our uh, infrastructure, we have uh, actually two build servers, and the job will uh, configure to different build server, and we will have different build running on these build servers. So uh, to answer these questions, we are uh, defining a new matrix called job balance uh, ratio. We will try to uh, try to find out if the balance uh, is the job schedule not so balanced, which cause some job runs very slow, uh, slow, and 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 cause uh, and cause the time increase. So we collect uh, this data from the uh, build server, and we uh, calculate the ratio as as this uh, as this diagram, as you can see, actually the job is equally be distributed in these two servers, right? So uh, as we can see, the job balance ratio, it tells me the problem is not caused by the uh, unbalancing of the job. So what's the, pro actually, what's the next, pro uh, ne uh, next hypothesis? We will uh, try to see if because the uh, performance of the build server and especially because the network issue, because when we build, we have to uh, build a lot of the doc image and the image have to uh, get the uh, repo from the uh, outside and we will cache it in the uh, local cache server and we will build it again. So uh, during our, uh, our uh, our investigation, we find out there are uh, a lot of retry in the uh, log. As you can see, we are using the uh, caller to build the other Docker server, and the caller log, you can see, uh, it will fail a lot, and there are many retries, and we, based on our history data, normally the deploy job, it will have eight times retry every day, and for the um, image build job, it will normally have uh, 75 times, but from the, um, the, uh, the data from the, uh, of the August, we will see there are more than those da uh, data, so the actions we have to take is to optimize the network connection and also try to um, resolve the I.O. issues. So the optimization, number one, is very simple. We, first of all, we, we will try to upgrade the build server with more CPU and RAM. And second, we will use the SSD storage to have be better I.O. performance. We move the, those two uh, build server from the uh, SATA pool to the SSD pool to have better I.O. performance. 
And the third, we will change to use another uh, VPN to have better network connection because in China, the uh, the image build to have to use the uh, uh, the resources from the um, outside, and sometimes it will be banned. So uh, we have to change the VPN uh, to have better network connection. After this uh, optimization, you will see the uh, uh, the train is uh, dropped. We optimize about the 25% of the uh, build time. But we are still uh, thinking how we can, uh, how we can uh, optimize it to, uh, to the normal uh, data as, uh, as it, uh, in, in just like, like the previous uh, data. So we're digging into the detail of the building process at the be uh, at before uh, before the the building script is just uh, not so uh, modelized and we we every step is uh, is uh, mixed together and we have a uh, uh, we have the uh, the engineer uh, discussion and clean up the steps of the building process and we finally we will understand is the building. Docker image it takes it has the similar curve of the uh, uh, width uh, to to the to the to the build time, and the build Docker image this step is a critical part of our whole building process. So we will find ways to um, optimize this script. So how can how can we optimize? the um, the uh, building process of the docker image normally uh, when we are building a uh, we we upload a patch the patch get merged and uh, we when we run the daily build it will build all the images overall actually as i remember there is there are uh, about over 200 images so, which means in the daily build, we have to rebuild the two, over 200 images every time. It takes time a lot. So, it, we, def, we, are, uh, we decide to define a new matrix to, to help us to uh, understand the, if we could reduce some uh, some. Uh, some images and avoid building them again if they those images are not changed. So we define the image reviews rate for uh, for this process. What's image uh, reviews rate? It, uh, the image reuse rate means during this daily build we are not going to rebuild this image, we will keep reuse these images. Because when we are uh, development some features, maybe some images is not get impact, so we are eventually we do not need to rebuild this image, so we can keep use the last version or last uh, uh, tag of the images, right? So from those uh, um, uh, metrics, you can see in the uh, September, in the September, the re the reuse rate is very is zero because the whole script it will just build uh, uh, all the images overall. And from from the uh, September uh, 17, we are going to refactor this script, and the reuse rate will uh, increase to uh, to to 80 percent, but Going going to the next month, the reuse rate it will have a, it will not so stable. That's because the reuse rate is uh, is very uh, it depends on the uh, feature development. Once the feature have man, impact many projects, it will have uh, we have to rebuild many uh, images. So uh, after we, we reflect this uh, script, we can have a better optimization of this uh, uh, 
or have better optimization. The optimization effect is around 70%. And by by, but I but from this seventy percent, it's not the best because you can see in the uh, next month the build time is increased again. That's because that we should have another way to optimize our uh, uh, script or from other aspect. We will uh, we have we have to find another uh, metrics to help us to. Uh, to uh, have another metrics to help us to understand the key issues of these uh, building systems. So we are keep working in the uh, this month, hoping to find a better metrics to help us to understand. So the uh, summary is, um, I th we think a metrics should be used for a purpose, just like I sh show in my story. We used the um, reuse rate to measure how many ma uh, Docker image we are reuse in a daily build, but not all the uh, metrics can re resolve our one pro uh, problems. We have to define different metrics from different aspects to describe these problems, and finally we can get the uh, uh, resol uh, resol uh, the resolution of this problem. And second is uh, we have to understand the different relationship between different metrics. Metrics may have some uh, relationship. They ha may have some, uh, uh, some metrics may depend on another. Like the uh, building time, the metrics, they depend, actually depends on the image reuse rate and uh, job uh, schedule ratio, those two metrics. We need to find several metrics or a group of metrics to describe a problem. Also, we sh should find a group of uh, metrics to describe your solution and help you to evaluate your solutions. The fourth is uh, we need to drill down and define new metrics. How to drill down is you have to understand your problem very clearly. Just like the uh, example I show in the uh, slides, you have to understand the build time, how how you build your six, uh, how how you, how the daily build runs, and what's the steps, and you can drill down the data, drill down the build time into different metrics, and evaluate each metrics. And the thought is uh, make assumptions and implement them. Make assumptions and try to see, uh, and try the uh, adjustment and try try the uh, the try to see the results of your adjustment and then you will close your feedback look. Okay, and at last I will encourage encourage you guys to look at your building uh, look at your CI/CD process, uh, process and. Starting today, maybe you do not have a goal to uh, how to optimize your process. You can look at the data you, you in your hand. Maybe you can get some intuition. And if you have a goal, that is better. You, you will try to understand the problem and drill down the data, and you, you will find a uh, solution to them. OK, that's all. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay. So, so after you break down the build time from uh, Docker image build, so which um, uh, which is the the most uh, step that spend most time in the build? Uh, after I, I I break down the steps, the most uh, time consuming task yeah. is the uh, the the image building process. Mm. Can be more specific. Uh, actually, we you, I, we have to download a lot of the image 
uh, from the uh, outsource. Uh, so so, so the, the download the, process. Uh, the download process from yes. the image layer. So yes. you, so you chain the VPN uh, service to uh, boost up that uh, process. Yeah, that is one. Another is we try to reuse the image we could reuse. Uh, local cache. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, not the no local cache is because uh, because in some day maybe the image not changed, we can use it, the older image. So do you have any uh, local repository for? Yeah, we have local repo, but, but uh, if we uh, merge the new features, the local repo have to be updated, right? Yeah. So we, we, some image we will not update, some image we will update. Mm -hmm. But the by default process, it will update all and build image all overall again. Yeah. That costs a lot. Yeah, so thank you. Okay, thank you.